Hey guys, Ethan Studios here, and welcome to the Summer 2022 update of every LEGO Ninjago ninja suit ranked. In this video, I'll be ranking every mainstream ninja suit released in this line, from 2011 all the way up to Summer 2022. Just so you're aware, this video is a compilation, meaning it will include older footage of some of the previous videos I've filmed in the past. However, the difference is that I will be adding in all of the new suits that have come out since I last produced one of these. One last thing I should mention is the design for this specific stand was inspired by the legendary Dietenaglia Studios. A link to his channel will be in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get right into this. These are the casual line of suits. The reason these guys are so low is because they aren't really suits at all. As they stand, they work tremendously well for what they are and they're an excellent and affordable way to get the hair pieces for the ninja. But as ninja suits, they just don't compare to some of the others on this list. Near the very, very bottom of the list, we have the kendo suits. These did bring back this very nice samurai armor mold, and I believe the helmet was new for the time, but underneath all of that, it's just the regular old pilot suit. Pretty disappointing, if you ask me. Following those up, we have what Brickset refers to as the Forbidden Spinjitsu suits. The reason these are so low is solely for the reprint of the already common Season 11 suit, only with an exclusive hood piece. I like that LEGO added this as an extra incentive to get all of the sets, but as they stand, the figures themselves are extremely weak and undesirable. The Spinjitsu Core minifigures are this low on the list for two main reasons. First, they're a direct ripoff of the Forbidden Spinjitsu minifigures we got back in 2019 with the Season 11 sets. Second. LEGO didn't even go far enough to complete the collection, only giving us a measly 3 out of the 6 main ninja. These are quite disappointing. Next up, we have the suits from the Spinjitzu Slam wave of sets. Similar to the last line, these reused the same leg print from the Season 11 suits, and the torso prints aren't as detailed as I would like them to be. Getting the hoods in a pearl gold and silver color was a nice addition, and the new face prints featured here were a welcome change compared to what we had normally gotten. The Spinjitzu Masters released alongside the Sons of Garmadon Wave of Sets in 2018. Each of these were released in their own respective spinner, priced at $10 each, and for what they are, they aren't terrible, but my main issue lies within the fact that each of them share a unified leg print. I definitely would have liked to have seen their elemental powers leak into the printing on their legs just a bit more, because the actual piece used just doesn't seem to fit. What I do appreciate, however, it's the fact that they introduced the lower mask mold in each ninja's respective color, which was really nice to get. The crystallized suits, at least these less detailed versions of the golden armored up suits, rank this low solely because of the lack of creativity. These suits feel eerily reminiscent of the ninja we got back in 2021 with the island. Notice both the color and print similarity in both of the Kai and Jay figures from the island. Both have very similar knee pad and sash prints down on the legs as well. I would also like to point out that Lloyd's armor piece here is in a pearl gold, compared to the gunmetal gray the rest of the team receives. This does lead to a look that appears to be much less unified than it actually could have been. LEGO also continues to use the same mask piece that we've been getting for over three years now. Am I the only one who's tired of it at this point? Next are from the January wave of sets. These are the epic battle suits. These are without a doubt some of the wackiest and most unique entries into this list, and I appreciate them for that, but the lack of unity amongst them is a bit of a problem. Also noticeable is the fact that Lloyd and Nia didn't receive suits for this specific wave, making the collection feel hollow and incomplete. A nice touch, though, is the fact that we received Kai's hairpiece from the island in this wave just a few months early. I also don't understand why LEGO just didn't do it for all of the Epic Battle Ninja, but I appreciate the notion for at least one of the figures. Speaking of collections that feel incomplete, we have the Spinjitzu Burst figures. I find it extremely unfortunate that we only received three variants for these, because I genuinely adore these figures. The elemental power pouring out of each of them is printed and displayed so nicely. The reason they're so low on this list is because this collection is incomplete. It's unfortunate, but it's just the way things are. Similar to the Spinjitzu Burst figures, these are the NRG Ninja from 2012. 
These ones aren't quite as detailed, but I still appreciate the unique colors and prints each one entails. Most specifically Zane with his baby blue primary color, and Cole with the pink printed detail. These also shine and glimmer when you hold them underneath the light. Neat! The Avatar suits are comparatively more unique than many of the other geese featured on this list due to the varied nature of each. The main three that were included in the actual arcade pods, being Kai, Lloyd, and Jay, feature the most detail compared to the others, while Cole and Nia unfortunately use an array of bland and easy to find city prints that make them less than desirable. However, What's most special about this wave is the fact that we finally got a figure that fans have been requesting for ages, Pink Zane. His arrival was nothing if not glorious, and I can assuredly say that I'm thankful to finally have him in existence. Yet another wave of figures in what many refer to as gimmick sets, the Dragon Masters are what I consider to be some of the better figures featured in these packs, specifically because of the unity amongst them. I love the fact that they were designed to look like flight suits. The leg printing with what appears to be a harness tied to it is what really ties the look together. Another excellent aspect of these suits is the reflective dragon print featured on the back of all five of them, further adding to the unity shared amongst them, while also adding a touch of clarity to the name Dragon Masters. Also, I do apologize for having the wrong Zane hood here. I did actually lose my Zane Dragon Master hood, so this is the one I had to go with. Up next are the second wave of crystallized suits, or what I like to call the Golden Armor versions. These are very similar to the Master of the Mountain suits because of the fact that they both used armor to cover up simpler versions of their geese. Oni Lloyd is obviously the standout here with the Oni mask piece in a stunning pearl gold. Wu and Nia are some of my favorites here as well, particularly with their sparse usage of the pearl gold color compared to the rest of the ninja team. However, the main line of suits here feels very disappointing to me. The gold is just too much, and pair that with an already bland suit underneath, and these land themselves lower on the list. These are the core suits. These released in January of this year and can be easily recognized by their simplistic yet effective design. What I like most about these in particular is how each ninja's respective element seems to be bleeding out of the right part of the suit. If you look closely at Lloyd's, his is almost reminiscent of some green dragon scales. What should be noted about these, however, is the fact that they're non-canon to the TV show. Oh, and before I move on to the next entry, I would like to mention that each of these have their own katana suited to their specific suit color. While most of the colors already existed, Jay's in particular was a new color for the part in this light yellow. These guys here are what Brickset refers to as the Golden Dragon variants of the original Floor Ninja, and for the sake of them fitting on the stand, I have actually removed the large wing pieces they are included with. Now, what I particularly love about these is the use of transparent arms, legs, and heads to really hit home the point of their elemental energy. While Kai and Jay reuse their core face prints, Zane and Cole here have entirely new ones that look absolutely delightful. I mean, these are just exuding raw ice and earth energy. I desperately hope a day comes when I'm able to use these in an actual stop motion video on my channel, because they look absolutely incredible. From all the way back in 2011, we have the original Ninja Geese from the Pilots. The reason these are so low on the list isn't because there's anything inherently wrong with them, but just because of how their simplicity has become inferior to many of today's modern outfits. However, what I do love about these is the choice to go with the classic ninja hood. It gives off such a nostalgic feel, and for the time, captured the look of a ninja perfectly. Also yes, I see that this is the wrong face for Cole. I bought the figure like this, I bought it off of Bricklink, and it said it was a Cole minifigure, and it came with a Zane face, so that's not on me. I'm, I'm sorry it came like this, guys. These are the tournament suits, released back in 2015, right alongside the Zukin suits, and compared to those, these are relatively weak, however, there's still a lot to love about them. They continued the use of the half mask with hair combo, and for the first time ever, we got sleeveless ninja suits. Quite unique, indeed. The rebooted suits are sure to be nostalgic for many, as they are for myself as well. Even though they lack leg printing, I still find these better than all of the previous entries on this list, for not only nostalgia's sake, but for the fact that they fit their tech theme so well. These suits were also the introduction of the half mask, 
meaning we actually got the ninja's hair pieces for the first time. This monumental moment signified happiness for Ninjago fans everywhere, and these figures are ones I'm still thankful for today. Up next are the Seabound suits. As of the recording in this video, these are the most recent wave of suits. The next ones have not yet been revealed. I think looking from the torso down, these rank among some of the most well-designed and unique looking prints. I especially love how each of their respective symbols kind of fades into the background of the suit, but yet it's still extremely relevant due to the keen orange coloring. However, the fact that these are scuba ninja is something that is kind of funny to me, and honestly, it just doesn't tie together at the end of the day. For those that want to improve these suits, try giving them the Season 11 hoods and armor. Here we have the Air Jitsu suits, and as you could see, I couldn't actually fit all of them on the stand across, so I did put Wu right back here. Hopefully that's okay and you can still see him okay. Similar to the NRG figures, these appear as a powered up version of the ninja, except these ones have a more unified look with the black base color. Getting the hoods in each character's respective color without any alterations to it was something new and exciting for the time, and the powered up faces included were excellent counterparts for the ones previously given to us with the NRG wave. Coming up next, we have the Legacy Robes for both Seasons 3 and 4 combined. These went with the half mask design featured in those respective waves, and oddly enough, this wave doesn't currently have a Zane minifigure present. What I like about these suits is how expertly they meld the designs of both seasons. The tournament look is clearly prominent, but there are faint hints of the techie all throughout it with little design details here and there. I love it. The stone armor suits took longer than most to complete, with Kai being released separately in a target box, and Jay included in a book, and Cole not being released until much later in his own separate set. Nevertheless, it was a miracle this collection was actually completed, and it brings a smile to my face to see them all together. My only gripe lies with the fact that some of them have leg printing while others don't. It takes away from the entirety of them being unified, but regardless, this is still a collection I'm incredibly thankful to see exist. These are the DX or Dragon Extreme suits, and they were released back in 2011 with the original wave of Ninjago. Please also note that this is one of the only wave of suits that I don't actually have completed. I am missing just a few, I'm so sorry for that. I just, uh, I do apologize. Lloyd and Jay do go for absurd amounts of money right now, and that is why I don't have both of them. Again, I do apologize. Anyways, taking a look at the actual suits themselves, you'll notice a dragon head on the front that does actually shimmer underneath the light, and it appears to be spewing each ninja's respective element. On the back, if you remove the masks, you'll be able to catch each ninja's name printed in a metallic lettering as well. Very nice. Coming up next are the Ninjago movie suits. These triggered a whole mass of controversy back in 2017 with the introduction of the new face designs. I myself don't really mind them. It was a much needed change for a show that had been running for a lengthy seven seasons. The suits themselves introduced this new two-piece mask mold that would be used for the next year or so, and it's one that was still revolutionary for the time. It still holds up as something great today, and even though these suits are a little simplistic, it's that design itself that makes them really stand out. Alright, so these are the Elemental Robes. These were released alongside the final battle wave of sets, and hold quite a great deal of nostalgia for me. They continued with the same hood pieces as the ZX suits, but unfortunately, they did not come with any armor, despite their actual appearance in the show. The Hunted Wave of Suits were released in late 2018. These ones were actually a pretty big risk by LEGO, because they actually weren't a new design. The main four are actually just damaged versions of their Sons of Garmadon counterparts. The only thing that did change was the lower color of the mask here, and they all received that in black. Lloyd and Nia, however, differ from the rest as they actually received these new suits entirely. I like to refer to them as Wu Crew suits because of the logo on the torsos. The Skybound suits are up next, and what's interesting about these is the fact that they reused this leg printing from last year's possession suits, as well as the same hood pieces. Jay here also got a new double-sided face print, 
What I appreciate most about these is the fact that their elemental symbols are rising up on this air jutsu tornado. Very nice. Here we have a relatively recent wave of suits. These are from the four episode special entitled The Island. Even though the special itself didn't receive much praise, the suits themselves were well received, particularly for their colorful designs, as well as the introduction of a new hairpiece for four of them. This hairpiece combined a headband with their current hairpiece almost seamlessly. And yes, for those wondering, Kai's does have a 32 thread count. Alright everyone, we are down to the top 10. These guys here are the Zuken suits. They were released in 2014 alongside the tournament robes, some ones I mentioned earlier, but it's very clear to me that these ones stand above those. I adore the bright and vibrant colors mixed with the light brown here. The hoods themselves were a new piece, seeing as they didn't feature the small bit of armor above the eyes, and this was also our first time getting a new Samurai X suit since 2012, and I gotta say, I love the introduction of Dark Green into her color scheme. In August of 2020, we got the Master of the Mountain suits, and to me, these somewhat resemble what a crossover between a ninja and a knight would look like. Love the separation of the gold and silver for each of the team members, although I definitely would have liked to have silver be Zane's primary color, seeing as it is his actual skin color. And moving on to the next group here, we have a proper Ninjago classic. The ZX suits were released in 2012 and still remain one of my favorites. These suits were revolutionary for the time as they diverged from the classic ninja headpiece in favor of these smaller ones alongside the shoulder armor. Each design is so simple, yet it features just the proper amount of detail needed to match the new pieces. These ones are wonderful. In seventh place, we have a season that is very dear to my heart. It is Possession. These were the first ninja suits to feature black as their primary color. I also love how the sashes meet in the middle to form a circle with what I believe is an elemental symbol in the middle. Once again, these hoods are new, featuring a duality of colors for the first time ever. Love these suits. These are the Prime Empire suits, and as you can see with Nia, the medium azure is her primary color for the first time in her history. Contemporary mask and armor pieces are included to add to the video game aesthetic. Really like the circular discs strapped onto their chests as well. Almost seems as if they're simulating some type of VR tech. Very cool. Next up, we have the Day of the Departed suits. These were released in 2016 and were meant to be a modern representation of the original ninja suits. The brown shoulder armor gives them more of a rugged feel and the possession masks were remolded in their primary and secondary colors. Ah yes, at last we have reached the 10th anniversary suits. Each of these highlights a specific suit from the recently rebooted era of Ninjago. For Lloyd we have the Island, Kai Forbidden Spinjitzu, J Prime Empire, Zane Powered Up Forbidden Spinjitzu, Cole Master of the Mountain, I unfortunately don't have Nia yet, and Wu looks to be from Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitzu. These ones are great. Here are the Sons of Garmadon suits. This was Ninjago's return to form after the movie, and let me say, did it return with a bang. If you move them under the light, you can see that they shimmer just a bit as well. Love that. I'm also a big fan of the lime green here on Lloyd's torso and the orange on Kai's. Great wave here. Okay, it is now down to the top three. And let me just say, it was quite a difficult decision to choose between the three. All of them mean so much to me, and they all have such a wonderful aesthetic. Nevertheless, the list had to be concluded. Here we go. In third place, we have LEGO's wonderful legacy suits. These mean so much to me because I had such a wonderful time when I made my Ninjago season with them, and I love how bright, bold, and vibrant each of the colors is. I especially love seeing Nia with this maroon color that was very unique for her. Very interesting, and I don't think we ever saw anything like that again, which is unfortunate, but I understand why they want to stay with the blue for her. Love all of the other colors for the ninja, and this is just an amazing wave. The Forbidden Spinjitsu suits rank second place not only for their elegant simplicity, but also for their introduction of what has now become a classic hood and armor piece. Master Wu also has a new head and cape piece along with the updated torso and legs. Also love the smiley face featured on 
Jay's suit right about here. Also the armor on Lloyd's suit is very nice, like how it goes into his arm there. And uh, yeah. And finally, in first place, we have the Hands of Time suits. These suits carry such a sense of nostalgia for me because I actually started my channel with the Season 7 sets. This was also Nia's first use of Gunmetal Grey, and this is one of the only times that they all wore boots. These suits are absolutely covered in detail. I could go on and on about how much I adore these, but I think it's just about time to wrap up this video. And there it is guys, every LEGO Ninjago ninja suit ranked, updated for summer 2022. For those of you that watched all the way to the end, thank you so much for being a fan of this channel and supporting me as a person. Now. You're all probably wondering whatever happened to this channel. I've gone months without uploading. And yeah, life has really gotten to me. I've been extremely busy. Again, as many of you know, I have quite a few health problems that I'm still dealing with, still in the process of getting through, but that's not going to stop me. I want to come back and make one last season. I want a satisfying conclusion. And yeah, I'm currently working on that at the moment. When I have updates for you all, I will be posting them. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning into Ethan Studios. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.